And we're back. Our first guest is Julia White with the Tulsa Artist Fellowship. Julia, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, good to have you here, child. What is the Tulsa Fellowship, Artist Fellowship? Lay it out for us. Yeah, the Tulsa Artist Fellowship is a year-long residency for visual and literary artists. It was established by the George Kaiser Family Foundation in 2016 when we welcomed our first class. And we have grown in the past three years from 12 visual artists to a total of 42 fellows. And we provide artists with time and space to create in Tulsa. Boy, uh, we need more Kaisers around. <laughs> Oh, we do. I mean, we could pull the state out of so many hot pockets. It just sounds incredible. How does it work? How does one, first of all, let's talk about the fellows. How does one get to be a fellow? It's all application process. So to become a fellow, there is, and we currently are in application. We're in an open call. Mm. And so we are accepting applications from visual and literary artists. So for one to become a fellow, um, they must have a background in art. Um, have a strong resume when it comes to gallery exhibitions and publications in terms of um, just a pro just a record that they've that the artists have been practicing. Um, we have a lot of artists that come from they all co they come from everywhere. Um, we do have a strong Oklahoma base um, here in our program, but we have fellows that come throughout the country and join us in Tulsa for a year. But in order to be selected as a fellow, um, they apply. And then we have a rotating panel. Uh, we have five panelists on both the literary and the visual arts cohorts. The panelists, we select the panelists and um, they come also from all over the country. We, we really wanna bring in um, strong diversity in terms of art um, and the people that are selected, the artists that are selected. So the application process, they submit their artwork. We ask them, um, you know, the potential candidates, how they see themselves contrib contributing to Tulsa's community. Once they come into the program, I don't want to backtrack just a little yeah. bit, but once they come into the program, are they assigned uh, someone from the board or does the board pick and choose? How does that happen? Yeah, so um, the Tulsa Artist Fellowship, we have a an advisory committee that is made up of art leaders from the community. And they're not assigned to anyone, the advisor, the advisory committee not only advises the program, but they are a liaison in a sense between the fellows arriving to Tulsa mm -hmm. and maybe an opportunity. So we have, um, we have a, an amazing relationship with the University of Tulsa and OSU Tulsa, as well as OSU and Stillwater, where, and a potential hopefully relationship with Roger State, where the artists are adjuncting for various departments. So whether it's in creative writing or if it's in visual arts. So those relationships were created because of our advisory committee. We have representatives from the university. Is there any limitation? Let's take the writing aspect of it. Is there any limitation as to what they should write? Are we talking books? Are we talking uh, motion picture scripts? Are we talking plays? What are we talking about? All of it. So when in the application process, we are looking for play screenwriters, we, which we have. We are looking for graphic novelists, young adult, um, nonfiction, creative fiction, memoirs. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a diverse group. Um, there are a couple categories that we don't fit in. We have a strong poetry. Um, we also have um, in our current class that we just welcomed in January, we have two translators. So we have a translator that is translating um, um, Portuguese to English, and then Old English into um, Old English poetry. Wow! Yes. How was this all? How was this all put together? You know, part of the Kaiser's vision is supporting the arts and supporting the artists. To support the art, you must support the artist. And because um, you know we have time and space that we are able mm -hmm. to offer these fellows, as well as a very nice financial stipend, um, it, it came to be just as an idea of let's, how can we um, enhance the arts community mm -hmm. and enhancing the arts community would be supporting the artist. And so when the program came to be, um, the advisory committee started thinking of ways that we could help financially and um, 
um, not only financially, but just career-wise, how can we support an artist? And as we see with other models like our fellowship, we there's art residencies across the country. And ours is unique because we're not a residency. We're um, a fellowship where they are awarded the $20,000. Um, it's not mm -hmm. merit-based. It's on, um, you know, the potential and the promise of what they as an artist could become. It seems to me that uh, in this time when football seems to be more important than education, or football is more important than the arts, that the arts and education both are taking serious hits. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. fail to understand why there isn't more emphasis given out of Washington and out of Oklahoma City towards supporting the arts I, I, in education. I, I just don't understand it. I think that is a question well above my pay grade. Oh, but yesterday, yeah. but even yesterday, when the administration um, wanted to cut um, what 1.6 billion dollars of art funding for the National Arts Endowment, it hurts everybody. There are organizations throughout Tulsa that receive grants so that they can continue on giving free programs and free classes and free education with arts that are being cut out of the public schools then what happens? Where's that opportunity? And so this is just another opportunity like other larger councils in the city that allow for children to come in and have an opportunity mm -hmm, to participate mm -hmm. and see art firsthand. Let's dance over if we could to the visual arts. Absolutely. What do you cover? What do you have available? Oh, we have a r wide range, um, very diverse group. We have visual, so visual artists, we have oil painters, we have graphic novelists. Well, graphic novelists, um, fall in between literary, but we have fiber art, we have um, ceramics, we have large installation, we have sound installation and performance. Right now at the Philbrook downtown, it's free to the public and we have a group exhibition that is showcasing last year's cohort. So really? it's open to the public, it runs until March 4th and mm -hmm. it's free to the public and there's over 20 artists showcasing their work and it's just a great way to see kind of like bits and pieces of the diversity um, when it comes to the area of practice. You're, you're in charge of the program, are um, you not? I want to say I'm in charge, but yeah, we have a we have a team of three. I've been with the program for the longest. Mm. Um, we're in the middle of an executive director search, so I'm very excited about that. But I have been um, kind of the face of and the go-to person for the last. Uh, the reason years. I, I say that you have been now exposed to a great deal of the artists coming through the door, and I'm assuming there is no limitation on age. No. Nope. If they show promise. Come on in. Yeah. Have you been surprised by the contributions of any of them? I'm, no names, the, but. Um, uh, we, I'm surprised every day about the work and the involvement in the community and how Tulsa has become their home, even if it's a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we just entered our third year, which means that our inaugural, our first year class, those artists are now just entering their third year as well. Houses have been built, babies have been born, marriages have happened. So it's been really nice to see this group um, come through the program and how they've engaged. It would seem to me, and again, I, 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 I just keep, I'm staggered by the contribution being made, not monetary, that's impressive enough. But to take these folk, these budding artists, in all walks of, of, of life, all ages, all demographics, to have someone, a governing board, if you will, to work closely with them, just absolutely amazes me. Absolutely. Uh, you hear the I'm music? So Would sorry. you like to dance? I don't know no, I don't know. From. <laughs> Not quite oh, certain. it was supposed to be on vibrate. Is that, is that you? <laughs> it is me. It was supposed to be on vibrate. I'm so sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> no, it is. It's really um, amazing. We have so 42 artists. That's 42 apartments. Um, that's 42 studios. That's 42 opportunities for teaching, for presentations, for um, gallery shows. It's really, and then also how these relationships outside of the money are being built. So we have these gorgeous studios in the Tulsa Arts District and every first Friday the doors are open. So it's a great opportunity for the public to come in and see the artwork. It's going from the Philbrook downtown into our space and seeing how um, how work is created and where it's created and who's creating it. Okay, very briefly because I got about 30 seconds. 
How do they get an application first? Applications can be found on our web website, the Tulsa Artist Fellowship .org. Um, You can follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to kind of keep up with our happenings. And then there is a newsletter to sign up to receive more happenings and whatnot. And final question. Where again and when can they see last year's finished product? Absolutely. The downtown Philbrook, which is located in the Tulsa Arts District, mm -hmm. and it is up now and it runs through March 4th, and it is free admission to the public made possible by the Kaiser Foundation, the George Kaiser Family Foundation. George Kaiser Family Foundation, Tulsa Art Fellowship. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank your phone. <laughs> we'll be back I'm with so more sorry. right after this. Oh, yeah. my gosh.